Hello, I'm JW. This time we're going to have a look at some old equipment, a piece of test equipment in this case, and it comes in this uh, leather or leather style case. And uh, what's inside? Well, let's uh, open it up and find out. So here it is in its uh, what probably is leather case, the little strap there, uh, the uh, compact design. And if we open it up there, we can see the top of the thing. That's obviously the, uh, the wrong way up. In the back here we've got a selection of test leads of various types, so I'll have a look at them in a moment. Basically what we've got in there. This front bit will swivel around. And then on the front we've got six sockets for connecting the various test leads. And then on the top here, analog meter there, and two switches here. One which says off, test and read, and this one is numbered from 1 to 6. This is made by GH Zeal Limited, London, England. Now, GH Zeal does still exist, at least partially. It's uh, apparently part of some bigger company now. And they make thermometers, and that's basically what this is. Scale here goes in uh, degrees centigrade, 0 to 100. And then you've got the Fahrenheit equivalent underneath. So uh, let's take it out of this uh, leather case so we can see what's uh, going on there. So it should just unclip. And that's just say the case there, nothing uh, doing with that really. And then here is the thing itself. Now, so the scale uh, starts at zero. There is a little adjustment here which should uh, allow that pointer to move a little bit. Seems to be pretty much on zero anyway, but we'll just uh, try adjusting that, see if it does actually move. Yes, it does. So. Uh, Seems fine, so make sure that's stuck at zero. And then uh, one to six uh, presumably is going to be for the six inputs here along the bottom. So presumably selecting which of the six test leads you're going to be using. And then top here, test is marked here, so if this has a battery and you would expect it to go up to there. Well, it seems to have some kind of battery in, but as we can see, barely moves at all. So obviously whatever battery this has got is uh, completely bust. And then in the reading position it will obviously read the uh, appropriate uh, connection from this. Now let's get this open because obviously that battery in there, whatever it is, is uh, completely ruined. Hopefully it hasn't leaked uh, toxic chemicals all over the place. If you have any test equipment which runs on batteries, remove the batteries before putting it away in any kind of cupboard. Especially if it's going to be there for any length of time. Obviously if you're going to use it again tomorrow, not a problem, but if it's going to go in storage for even a week or a month, Get the batteries out of there. Batteries do tend to leak, especially uh, modern alkaline batteries. And what leaks out is extremely corrosive and will burn away metal contacts, circuit boards and goodness knows what else. So it's not just a case of cleaning it up, it's a case of it's being destroyed. So this is a metal case and uh, cast alloy of some kind probably, aluminium possibly. And uh, a bit of sponge there which is in surprisingly good condition. And then inside, here's the battery, which uh, fortunately doesn't appear to have leaked everywhere. Chloride PP6, and that's a 9 volt affair, made in Britain, it says. Well, that's dating it for you. So, anyway, let's get this out of here. That's one of these uh, snap on affairs. So, yes, this hasn't leaked, but then this is almost certainly a zinc carbon variety, so there's not really much to leak in these ones. It's the uh, same old modern alkalines which are the problem. So, in the back, then, not a great deal going on here, just the battery lead there on the red and black leads. That's the analog uh, meter there, just with the two terminals, the wires going across to the circuit board. Six inputs here along the bottom, and just a single wire coming across, so they're presumably using the case as the ground or the negative. And then we just see the back of the switch here and then the other switch here. And there's presumably going to be a couple of other components uh, on the other side. We've got a resistor going across there. Now it doesn't look like this is going to be removable, so uh, I'm going to leave it in there because these are actually soldered in. And obviously you'd have to take the whole lot of this apart to get to it. And obviously remove knobs and so on. But uh, given how simple it is on the back, there's not going to be a whole lot to actually see here. As I say, all of this bearing around is the two switches, so there's just going to be two or three other components on there at most. Now this battery is completely ruined, of course, and uh, I don't have any of this uh, particular size. I don't even know if they still make this style of battery. Probably not. However, it's not a problem because uh, 
This is a 9 volt battery and uh, this type of battery, which you can still buy readily anywhere, is also 9 volts and conveniently the actual connections on the top, as you can see there, are exactly the same. So although this is a much physically larger battery, this is going to do the job just as well. This is an alkaline, so uh, it's going to last probably 20 times longer than this thing ever did. So uh, we can uh, get rid of that. So we can just connect up this uh, rather small physical battery and just stuff on the terminals to that instead. I should say. Pressed on securely. Obviously it's not going to fit in here particularly well in the original space, but it's good enough. So I'll just stick it back on temporarily. Place this around that way. So let's see what test does this time. Hopefully a bit further over this side. Yeah, well that's actually going off the scale. That may be because it's a uh, alkaline and the voltage is slightly higher than the uh, manky old zinc chloride thing we had before, but uh, nevertheless it is working, goes back to zero. Yeah, it's not pegging the meter quite, it's just past that, but uh, anyway, I'm sure that's going to be good enough. Now test leads wise, we've all got uh, this standard plug on the end, this just looks like a 2.5mm jack plug here, single ring and the piece are just two connections, kind of thing we used for a mono crystal earpiece uh, a very long time ago, and uh, this end has this very thin wire, has this sort of button shaped affair here. I'm presuming these are going to be a thermocouple type of thing, so we've got that one. And we've got another one here which has got this uh, rather larger button thing on the end. It's also got uh, yeah, a little magnet there. In that case uh, is definitely not steel, so that's got to be some kind of aluminium. So I'm presuming just magnetically to uh, stick onto something. Same uh, kind of plug on the end of that. And then we've got this third one which has this uh, probe type arrangement on it. And again it's the same kind of jack plug thing on the end. So three test leads. Obviously it had uh, sockets for six. but So let's try some of these testing things. We'll try this one with the uh, probe on it first. Right in the socket number one. Good click there when uh, shoving that in. So that's what we've got here. Now in that one we've got there, so you'd hope it would go back somewhere over that side. Okay, well it does. Well that's claiming it's about 30 centigrade in here, which is not. It's probably more like about, I don't know, 24 or something. It's fairly warm today. And uh, seems to uh, do the business there. The connection seems a bit... Uh, well, it's not too bad. It uh, moves a little bit as you uh, jiggle the connector, but nothing too disastrous. Let's try the number two connection, see if that also yeah, seems to work uh, pretty well. So uh, that seems all right. Try a couple of these as well. This is the one with the large chunk on the end of it. Let's try that in position three just for because we can. Yeah, pretty much in the same sort of area. This might be because of that uh, alkaline battery. The voltage is a bit high. I'd say it's not actually uh, quite that warm in here. And then we've got this uh, little bead one. Let's try that in position six. Yep, same thing again. So seems to work. And if we unplug it, yeah, it definitely uh, has the desired effect. So uh, yeah, seems to be working uh, certainly as far as that goes. So let's try uh, back to this pointy probe thing. Go to position three. Now I've got some hot water here in this container, so let's see if the temperature increases when we shove it in there. And uh, yes it does, so that seems to go up at a certain amount. Now the modern equivalent of this is basically going to be one of these things, these sort of K-type uh, thermocouple things. The main difference with these is these go up to a much higher temperature, this goes up to 1300, so literally uh, red hot metal. This only goes up to 100, but uh, we can uh, turn this one on and see what gives. Yeah, saying it's about 23, 24 in here, which is about what I would have thought. If we stick that in the hot water, get in there. Yeah, so we're claiming the hot water is about 45, which is uh, not too bad, and this thing's claiming it's about 50, so it's reading about 5 degrees up, which say may well be just due to that. Uh, 
battery being the wrong voltage. So that appears to work. Let's try the other probes as well while we can. Let's try this in the position number one. And this is the one with the small, looks like some kind of epoxy resin or something on the bead. So if we go back to that, that's sort of room temperature, claiming it's 30, but we know it's about 24. And if we shove it in there. Yeah, it's coming up fairly slowly, but then it's quite a large chunk on the end, so it's going to have a fairly high thermal mass, so it'll take a while to come up to the same temperature as the other one. Of course, if we keep it in the water, it might actually work somewhat better. Yeah, so that's showing it's what, what, 48 or something. I'd say it's about 45 in reality. It'll probably come up to the 50 mark, same as the other one. Pretty much, and we might as well try this larger piece. I'll take the magnet off because we don't have any reason for using that. And we'll try this in position three, or position two rather. And then, uh, yeah, so it's still around 30. And if we shove it in the uh, cup of water, yeah, that's again uh, slowly creeping up. So, uh, yeah, it seems to be still working just fine other than, say, that battery voltage is probably a bit high and obviously that's going to affect the uh, full scale reading which will also affect the others as well. So yes, after a few minutes uh, in the uh, water there, they're all reading uh, approximately 50 centigrade there and if we switch between them, you see they're all basically the same. That one's fractionally lower but barely noticeable on the scale there. And of course the other positions show as zero. And that test one again goes uh, far too high, which is probably why it's reading high for the uh, actual test. So uh, yeah, all seems to be working as intended. And there may be some adjustment inside for uh, compensating for those uh, erroneous temperatures. Let's say it's probably more to do with the battery itself rather than the uh, device needing adjustment. And yes, in the back here we can see the thing marked B and T. There are two little uh, potentiometer things in there, so presumably there is some kind of adjustment that could be done just in either or both of those holes. I'm not going to be adjusting it because uh, it doesn't uh, particularly matter. This has not been uh, acquired to actually use. It's more just for entertainment purposes and see how things are used to be made. But uh, yes, there's probably some adjustment can be done in there. Now I'm just going to remove this uh, battery because this is an alkaline battery and of course uh, it's the kind that can leak so we're going to be uh, removing it from the casing and we'll put the uh, thing back together. So let's look there at this uh, fairly old uh, probe type thermometer with six inputs uh, made by uh, GH Zeal. It says Z-Tron on the uh, scale on the front. Not sure on the age of this one, but uh, probably it's going to be uh, full of 60s or 70s, I would have thought, uh, due to the uh, basic styling and the fact it's got a leather case. And uh, scale-wise, uh, there you go, if you're uh, interested in the dimensions of that. So not a huge amount of use there these days, although obviously it still works, but uh, of course it's more usual. We're going to use the uh, sort of uh, black plastic thermocouply type things for more modern stuff, but nevertheless still works. And until next time, thanks for watching.